VC, it's me, back for a vinyl update, um, second one today, currently on vacation, so it's nothing better than being on vacation, uh, I think everybody out there knows that's always a good thing, um, first thing I got to show here is some 45s before I move on to the 12 inch, uh, picked up another Buddha record, uh, Ohio Express, Zigzag, and Yummy, 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 which I have that. I couldn't tell you how many copies. Uh, the Dartels Hot Pastrami on Dot Records, and uh, Dartle Stomp on the other. But I really like this sleeve. Um, <clears throat> this one is Royal Guardsman. It's uh, Snoopy's Christmas and the Smallest Astronaut. Uh, and then we got uh, Steve Martin, the dentist, on both sides, two different versions. It's from the movie Rocky, uh, not Rocky Horror Picture Show, um, Little Shop of Horrors. <clears throat> and then uh, the Royal Guardsman, kind of looks like Christmas and Snoopy's Christmas again. This is on a different label, the Lori label. And then we have Jumpin' Gene Simmons. The Dodo and The Jump. I think this is the only the second record I have from him. I have Haunted House, but I think that's the first one I've ever seen aside from that one. Um, then we got uh, Paul Evans and The Curls. Seven Little Girls Sitting in the Back Seat. And then on the other side, Worshipping an Idol. I can't remember where I got these at. I want to say it was at a at um, Half Price Books, I think. Uh, and this one, Twiggy and Friends, Zudi Zuzong, and Little Pleasure Acre. It's on Bell Records. The same as the Partridge Family and Sweet. So, on to the 12 inch Arthur Fedral and the Fed Fedlow, Fedler, and the Boston Pops plays the Beatles. Of course, this has all the usual ones you'd expect on here. Want to hold your hand, Yellow Submarine, Eleanor Rigby. Uh, this one is the, let's see, I don't know how you pronounce this. It's the Folk Tellers, Tales to Grow On. That's a really awesome, it's also autographed there sort of cool. Actually, I think that's, I don't know if they actually wrote that on there or if that's printed on there, but either way. And then, there's the label. Little, little trees on it, I guess. And the inner sleeve, I think it's just a white inner sleeve. Yep, it is. So this has, um, it says, come on in, give a listen. Uh, Wicked John and the Devil, Ghost Hunt, Apples and Bananas. Uh, so yeah, that's some good stories on here. This came out in 1979. So that'll be interesting. And then Persuasive Percussion, 1966. I don't know, I know there's different volumes to this, but this one has a year on it. So I don't know if they started doing... Some from each year based on the songs that were popular that year. I mean, these don't look like that they were songs from 66. I mean, they could have been. Istanbul, not Constantinople. Uh, Caravan, Never on Sunday. Of course, this is a command record, so it's the, the, the typical gatefold of that. Uh, let's see. Ralph Carmichael, Orchestra and Chorus. Church is finally over by the good ones, the good twins, sorry. The good ones is a different group. That's pretty great there, isn't it? That picture on the back is pretty cool, too. I think. But, you know, this also has two records in it. Uh, one of them is How Great Thou Art, the good twins. And the other one is just the good twins so I don't know if they're the 
right or wrong records, but it's the right artist. Uh, Neil Sedaka's Greatest Hits. Bought this because <clears throat> I have a couple of his records, but this one has Laughter in the Rain on it. Uh, also, Love Will Keep Us Together. Bad Blood, which is a good song. Breaking Up is Hard to Do. Bought this at Half Price Books for a dollar. I like that label. That's always that's a cool label. Uh, the Soul Singing Rambos. That's pretty, um, pretty great. Three eighty-eight originally. It's a heartwarming label. More records. No, it's still playing. The best of Ben Calder. And I always love the artwork on these. Uh, you see a lot of his artwork on different albums from different artists. Uh, he worked for Mad Magazine and Cracked Magazine, I think, as well. Uh, the artist was uh, Jack Davis, who just passed away not too long ago, I think. So yeah, Ben Colder is a really unusual artist, uh, a comedic artist that takes songs and does parodies of them before there was ever a Weird Al. Uh, he was one of the guys that was doing that. Really cool pictures in the back there. Illustrations, you might say. Uh, Rod McEwen at Carnegie Hall. It's a double album. April 29, 1969. I want to say that I might already have this, but I'm, it might be a different artist that I'm thinking of that has a similar type album from Carnegie Hall. I, and I was out yesterday doing some record digging and seen a ton of Rod, of Rod McEwen records. Um, I would have bought them all that I didn't have, but sort of limited on, on my my mood while you might say. Humorous side of country music, <clears throat> Homer and Jethro, this is another uh, artist that uh, was doing song parodies long before there was a Weird Al. I mean, Weird Al might have been born at this point, but I, he obviously would make records. This was 1963, so I don't know what year Weird Al was born. If I can, right here. Let's, let's find out real quick. Let me see here. Let me Google it real quick. You don't mind, do you? I'm going to Google Weird Al. And we'll see what year he was born. Just out of curiosity, at least for myself, if not anyone else. Um, I have to go to Wikipedia, apparently. Um, he was born October 23rd, 1959. So, he was born when that Homer and Jethro record came out. He's currently 57 years old. That's hard to believe it's crazy. We're all getting older. Uh, this is another Homer and Jethro. Any news from Nashville? The same artist, Jack Davis, that did the uh, Ben Colder record. This one's not in the greatest of shape. It's got a little rip there, and it definitely needs clean. Uh, but for 99 cents, and Homer and Jethro record I didn't have. Um... Hallelujah, I'm a bum. That's funny. The lousiest record. That's what it said. But there they are on the back. Did I show that already? Woman Jethro. Great artist. I have tons of their stuff. Uh, this one I had never seen or heard of. Houston and Dorsey goof it up. And this is autographed. It's, uh... Came out in... Doesn't have the year on the back here. It's uh, now appearing at the Americana's King Cellar, Daytona Beach, Florida. It's, this record's sort of falling apart, but I don't really have much information here about it. Other than it was probably a, a local act that was um, that performed 
The Bing Bamboo Zombie Jamboree. And the last one here is the Rock Taylor Exciting Review. It looks very interesting. This was probably, I want to say this one was probably with the same, the same uh, collection as the last one. Worldwide Records. This one doesn't even have a, um, let's see. This one has some gospel songs on it, but it's not not entirely a gospel album. Hmm. It didn't even say where it's uh, where it was made. It says Atlanta, Georgia here at the bottom, as far as the record studio. So, anyway, there you have it. Some more for my final collection, and to be cleaned, I'm currently in the middle of cleaning. Uh, some huge stacks of records that I got recently and um, yeah so I hope everyone's having a good summer out there I'm currently on vacation like I said and loving every minute of it um, I think my record's still playing it's hard to hear it I have it down really low for obvious reason um, so please subscribe if you haven't and leave some comments Blah, blah, blah. And mm, check me out on Instagram. Check me out on Facebook. And that's it. That's all the plugs I got. We'll see you in the next vinyl update.